Today I'll be commenting on Neville Goddard's 1957 lecture, Release Barabbas and Crucify Jesus. And while I do, I'm going to take you along on our weekend vlog, a day filled of wonderful eats in the Japanese countryside. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Tokyo Treats and Sokoroko. With these snack boxes, you have the chance to experience Japan in the comfort of your own home. The Tokyo Treat Monthly Pop Snack Subscription Box. It gives you up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks, only available in Japan for limited time, like Sakura Pepsi or Sake Kit Kats. While the other option, Sakurako, is a monthly, authentic Japanese snack subscription box. It supports local Japanese snack makers with up to 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. Each month has its own theme. This month's Tokyo Treat theme is Osaka Snack Nation. Osaka is known as Japan's culinary capital, and this month's box captures Osaka's fun and exciting snacks, like chocolate orange Kit Kats, Kobe melon soda, and Okonomiyaki Senbei, which is a Japanese version of a cracker. And Takoriko's theme for this month, mochi and fruit are two delicacies. They hold a special place in the hearts of many Japanese people. And this month, Sokoroko brings you such treats as the strawberry mochi manju, pairing it with a genmaicha green tea. And also for you to enjoy this month's special tableware, a beautiful chrysanthemum dish. Saka snack nation so you get this really beautiful book explaining all the snacks. Well, I love omeboshi pickle, plum pickle. I had it since I was a little kid. So let's try this popcorn flavored with it. Hmm, smells like regular popcorn with a little pickle smell. I can see the little pickle on there. Mmm, mm, it's good. Mmm, it's really good. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly good. Oh, this is our Sakurako monthly box. Oh, wow, they have a beautiful postcard. And once again, another beautiful little book explaining everything. All right, every snack box comes with a little piece of cookware. Oh, we got a beautiful little dish. They also got tea. What kind of tea is this, honey? Genmaicha. Genmaicha. Let's try this one. Is this like a melon cracker? Oh, yeah. Cute. Oh, I just love these kind of crackers. With some tea, it would be wonderful. Mmm. Oh, oh, how delicate. What a lovely melon flavor. What do you think, honey? What's your? I have to say, one of my favorites in the Tokyo box is definitely going to be this melon soda. And it looks like it's coming from Kobe. But this is actually a very popular drink all over Japan. I have to say for Sokoroko, my favorite snack was probably the rice crackers here. I just love crackers. Western, Asian, and these crackers, each one was so lovely. If you'd like to order your own Tokyo treat or Sokoroko snack box for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, check out the links in the info section beneath this video. And you can use code NEVOLUTION for $5 off your first box at Tokyo Treat and at Sokoroko. Thank you so much. In this lecture, Neville talks about the point of life. That basically, we feel that life should be a perpetual increase of the things you love. And that's what Neville called the art of living. And he teaches you to do this by simply learning to live in the end and catch the feeling that your wish is already fulfilled and thus live a more abundant life. Neville also talks about how everything in the world is a projection of something that activated within myself. I meet a friend and I say that I love him, and I see in him something that I would like to change. Everything in this world is the microcosm of the vastness in my own being. Everything in the world, no matter what it is, all the so-called evil could be changed, would man, observing, distill it out. If I knew this, I could look at anything, any condition, as a scientist could look at bubbling mash, and know I could extract something from it that is good. The easiest way to recognize what he is saying, and how out of your own consciousness, while you are night dreaming, 
and you don't realize that you're dreaming. You feel a world as real as what you call reality, or what some mystics call the wake dream. What if you could take back your control? When you feel helpless in reality, aka the wake dream, it is only because you're dreaming. But what Neville is teaching you here is that once you realize this, and you start to realize what you do want, and learn to catch the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and learn to revisit it until it becomes natural, home, and thus out pictures. But no matter how long it takes, one must persist. No matter what else you may see, even if the opposite happens, you must persist. And don't force it. Don't do it in a way where you feel burnt out, because then you very well manifest what you don't want instead. Just remember the joy of children imagining, but now you guide it with wisdom, intuition, and persistence. So in this lecture, Neville also tells you, if you want something, but you start to fear if it's possible, you're robbing yourself. But when you realize you want something different than what you have, that's your savior. And the solution is to learn to fix yourself on the state of the wish fulfilled and the feelings that brings. And you learn this art by doing it. Now Neville shared a case history. A woman had a neighbor who had been divorced for 19 years and she was up to her ears in debts. And she couldn't break this cycle. She couldn't even afford a vacation. And in one month, her son would be starting college, but she had no money to send him. She prayed and prayed and prayed over her problem, but got nowhere. And then she asked Neville's student to pray for her. And Neville's student explained the law to her and the art of imagining to get what you want. She asked her neighbor, what do you really want? And even though her neighbor had lost all faith in men, she said she still wanted to be happily married. So every night for a month, Neville's student would go to her neighbor's house, and they talked about all the qualities she wanted in a man. Gentleness, kindness, tolerance, attentiveness, honesty, and so on. And Neville's student had her neighbor say these qualities over and over. And then she took it to the next step. She asked her neighbor, Can you feel the embrace of such a man? And the lady said, Yes, I think I can. And then she took it yet another step further. She went through the actual marriage ceremony with her neighbor, including the part of slipping the ring on and hearing the words pronouncing the couple man and wife. And the last thing she had her neighbor do, and that is to sleep in the state, as though she was already happily married to such a wonderful man. And Neville's student also slept in the state, feeling that she had seen her neighbor happily married. A month later, a man came into the neighbor's office. He asked her where she was going for vacation, and she was ashamed to say nowhere. So she told him she might be going up to the High Sierras, and the man said, Then you must be my guest, for I own a hotel up there. He booked rooms for the three of them, the woman and her son, and the lady who had helped her. And the man was very kind and helpful to them. He told the woman that he had lost his wife a few months before, but he also told her he would never marry again. And this put her neighbor in complete distress, and she said to Neville's student, What will I do now? He is never going to remarry, he said so. The lady said, You are happily married, so we are not going to discuss this. You slept every night in the feeling of having a wonderful husband, a man who has the qualities you desire. So how can we discuss this matter? You are married. And that was over two years ago. The man changed his mind, and they had been married for two years. He also sent the woman's son to college. And the neighbor told Neville's student, You have no idea how good and kind he is, how wonderful. The woman said, Haven't I? She said, I set up these qualities with you and helped you. Do you think I don't know what he is like? And Neville said, He has so many stories of friends of his who wanted help. They told him the dreams they wanted to come true. And Neville listened and heard and looked as though they already were so. And they became true in the world. And you can do this for yourself and for others, just like Neville did. Remember these examples. Integrate them into your own life. We all have to start somewhere. And wherever we are in life, we must perfect this art of imagining through practice. Neville says, I ask you to construct a little drama that implies you have realized your dream, as we saw in the example of this lady, who listed all the qualities she wanted in a man and also went through the actual marriage ceremony. In just over a month, her drama unfolded, and the whole thing was sealed and dealed in three months. Neville says, 
Everything you want is within, for the vast without is only the microcosm of the soul within. But though you doubt, you will no longer doubt when the dream begins. And Neville asserts, I tell you that no matter what your dream, it can be realized, and that everyone can do it. And that is the whole purpose of his lectures and books, that you may not only realize your dreams here, but that you awaken and slip into other worlds. There are worlds within this world, and worlds within worlds. Neville goes on, I know. I have seen them, and I have been in them. It does not matter what people say to me about whether I can do it or not. I know I can do it, and I do it. So whatever your dreams are, it is time to realize them. It is time to catch the feeling of those dreams already realized. Take this to sleep. Wear it throughout the day like a fine perfume. Or even revisit little moments throughout the day. Steal and cherish the feeling of the wish fulfilled. What do you want? What would bring you joy in this world? And what is a scene that would happen if you had what you wanted? And with that, now let us go into the silence. Good. 